This patient's got a left brachial artery pseudoaneurysm arising from his dialysis fistula and a recent attempt at accessing it for dialysis. This was about four days ago. The pseudoaneurysm hasn't disappeared, so we've decided to treat this with a percutaneous injection of thrombin. Here you can see the prominent neck and the flow into the pseudoaneurysm. There's the neck there with rapid flow through it. And you'll see if we turn the Doppler off in a second that the neck is actually quite small because this is due to the tip of a needle whilst dialysis was being attempted. Obviously injecting close to the brachial artery, we've got to be careful we don't get any reflux which might cause ischemia of the hand. And here you can see it's quite a large pseudoaneurysm. There's relatively slow flow within the cavity of it when you get a bit more inferiorly. And there you can see it longitudinally. There's the neck and we'll pass more inferiorly and you can see the slightly slower flow in the larger cavity. And you can see the neck actually is quite small here, so the risk of dyslembolization is very small. So we're just going to inject thrombin. This is being made up with 10 mils of saline, and this is two and a half thousand units of thrombin, which is more than enough for most pseudoaneurysms. And once this has been made up, you swirl it. It's important you don't shake it because that can actually denature the protein. And this is made by Baxter, who make a lot of the thrombin that we use. And this is part of the, uh, it's one of the components of flow seal. So we're just drawing up the thrombin component here. We don't need the rest of it. And we're going to inject directly into the pseudoaneurysm with a 22 gauge spinal needle. Very straightforward procedure under ultrasound guidance. And the needle is so fine, you rarely need local anesthetic. And there you can see the needle longitudinally in this instance within the pseudoaneurysm. We're just going to inject the thrombin to a small amount. You can see immediately you get thrombosis within this pseudoaneurysm and there's no flow whatsoever. And we'll put some Doppler on in a moment and you'll see that the aneurysm is completely occluded. And if you look to the deep side of the ultrasound image, you can see that there's still good pulsatile flow in the brachial artery and the patient had no untoward sequelae from this. We have actually ultrasounded these patients' arteries distally when doing femoral pseudoaneurysms and we've, we've not seen any distal embolization picked up on ultrasound. Um, so very safe, simple technique, even in the upper limb.